12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. This morning, the nation's power grids, communication systems, and water supplies could be at risk because of a malicious computer code from China. Up next, why national security officials believe it could already be hidden deep inside those networks. Outside with live cam, well, perfect timing for all of that, he said glibly, because we're about to have one of the hottest weeks around here we've had in just a little while. Talk to Mike Ostrage coming up. Good morning, everybody. Hope you had an awesome weekend. Try to stay cool. It is Monday, the last day of July the 31st. Yeah, that's right. Happy Monday. We hope you had a wonderful weekend. It was, you know, hot, but I, I believe we're expecting the same all this week. Uh, take it up a notch, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Mike Ostrage is here. Yeah, a couple of notches even. So we had a bit of a break. I mean, if you were one degree on Saturday, still hot, but 99, 100 yesterday. But yeah, it's just, I mean, this is going to be almost rivaling what we had earlier in the summer, except we're not going to have the humidity in the afternoon. So that's the the, the big benefit uh, this week. But yeah, just get ready because it's going to be a scorcher. We've got lots of sun uh, sunshine, <laughs> lots of clear skies out there this morning. It's Monday uh, 82 here in town, 83 Canyon Lake, some upper 70s in parts of the hill country and humidity is not bad this morning. Canyon Lake Pleasanton 74. You get up there, it's kind of uh, sort of fog up your glasses uh, kind of humidity. 86 is what it feels like here in town. 89 is the heat index there in Canyon Lake. Mold is on the low side. That should be staying on the low side given the very, very dry afternoon air out there. And we are back to having heat advisories issued for the area. Now up around Austin, that is a an excessive heat warning. This is goes into effect later on this morning up until 8 o'clock tonight. And I would venture a guess that we're going to be seeing more of these all week long when you look at the uh, the forecast and uh, CPS Energy Conservation Day. Excuse me, this graphic didn't update. It is a yellow day today. We're going to update that for you, but uh, we, you can scan that QR code to uh, see different ways to conserve energy. 95 at noon, 103 high temperature today. Get used to seeing that number because there's going to be a lot of them this week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. A 30 year old Texas woman was one of the two people who died after a plane crashed into Lake Winnebago near Oshkosh over the weekend. Now, according to EAA Air Venture officials, 30 year old Devin Riley and 20 year old Zach Holly Moreno died in that crash. That crash happened just after 9 a.m. and it was near Whitman Regional Airport. Friends of Riley say that she lived in New Braunfels and says she and her husband ran the Texas Aviation Academy at New Braunfels Airport until it shut down. She also had ties in San Antonio after joining the Texas Warbird Museum at Stinson Airport. One first responder says that several people and their boats were on the scene trying to help before first responders because they were having trouble finding the scene. The initial responders were unable to get to the aircraft immediately. After an hours long search, crews successfully recovered both bodies from the lake. The National Transportation Safety Board and Federal Aviation Administration are still investigating that crash. New concerns this morning that Chinese hackers may have compromised critical U.S. infrastructure. There's an urgent search for malicious computer code that could affect power grids and water supplies. ABC's Rihanna Nally has more. It's being called a ticking time bomb. The New York Times reports the Biden administration believes Chinese hackers have installed malware on U.S. networks that could affect both military and civilian operations. Officials say the malicious code could disrupt power grids, communication systems and water supplies that feed military bases around the world. But the impact could spread much farther, as that infrastructure often supplies civilian homes and businesses. A National Security Council official did not acknowledge the malware directly, but said the Biden administration is working relentlessly to defend the United States from any disruptions to our critical infrastructure. Back in May, Microsoft reported finding mysterious computer code in telecommunication systems in Guam, the Pacific Island home to multiple U.S. military bases. Now, you U.S. officials acknowledge Microsoft could only see a small portion of a much larger issue. They say the Chinese malware effort predates the May report from Microsoft by at least a year. What are we seeing today? You know, the threat environment at its all time highest. Just over the last year, we saw an increase of 953 new 
bad actor groups, bringing a total of 3,500 unique groups. Earlier this month, Chinese hackers infiltrated the accounts of the U.S. Commerce Secretary and other officials at the Commerce and State Departments. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. Former President Donald Trump's team is creating a new legal defense fund. The money will help offset some of Trump's legal bills and the bills of some of his current and former aides caught up in various investigations of the former president. Trump's political action committee, Save America, already has spent more than $40 million on his legal fees and the fees of some of his associates in the start of the year. Sources say the new fund will be called the Patriot Legal Defense Fund. Trump advisor Michael Glasner will be in charge of it. The Mega Millions jackpot rocketed past $1 billion Friday night after nobody won the top prize. Although there was no winning ticket for the jackpot, five people won at least a million dollars. None were in Texas, though. The next drawing is scheduled for tomorrow night. 435, 81 degrees. Mother faces up to life in prison after she is found guilty of killing her two youngest children. Up next, we'll look at the case and the bizarre claims that her son and daughter were zombies. Taking a look at traffic, just got a note from Stephen Cavazzo say crash already this morning. 410 eastbound at Exchange Parkway. Three lanes are blocked. Look outside with live cam this morning. You know it's going to be a hot day. We're already at 81 degrees here and looking even to get hotter throughout the week. We're going to be checking in with Mike for all those details coming up. Today is sentencing day for Lori Vallow Daybell, the mother convicted earlier this year of murdering her own children as part of a cult. ABC's Derek Dennis reports on what to expect today. This morning, the so-called doomsday cult mom, Lori Vallow Daybell, faces sentencing in an Idaho courtroom convicted of killing two of her children, claiming they were zombies. Vallow Daybell's brother, Adam Cox, tells ABC News he's heartbroken. We're all, you know, hurt. Um, devastated. Prosecutors argued Lori was on a quest for money, power and sex and was willing to remove anyone who got in her way. After a six week trial, a jury unanimously found Lori guilty of murdering her seven year old son, JJ, and her 16 year old daughter, Tylee. Tylee, she's just one of the loveliest little girls that you'll ever meet. Super funny, super smart. JJ, on the other hand, severely autistic. Nobody thought that he would ever be able to talk. And he just flourished and became a incredible little boy. With no death penalty in Idaho, Lori is expected to receive consecutive life sentences. Family members are set to speak in court, including her only surviving child and Lori's sister. The big question remains, will Lori address the court or will her family's words and that of the prosecution be the deciding factors between spending the rest of her life in prison or a lesser sentence? This is their opportunity to plead to the court regarding what I would predict is going to be their request to have her remain bars for the balance of her life. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. Time now is 440 and 81 degrees for now. A carbon monoxide scare sends an Olympic gold medalist three children to the hospital. Up next, how this happened outdoors. A Texas woman is seeing the benefits of a brand new drug that's supposed to help people suffering from Alzheimer's. Up next, what she's doing now that she hasn't been able to do it in years. Welcome back. It's 443. Olympic gold medalist Bodie Miller and his wife are revealing that three of their kids were rushed to the hospital after being exposed to carbon monoxide. ABC's Ron and Alley has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, New details on the carbon monoxide scare that sent Bodie and Morgan Miller's three children to the hospital. Morgan posting this video of their family in the emergency room, writing, we had a crane at our house to remove our broken hot tub. Asher, Axel, and Scarlett innocently stood on the front step of our house to watch the action, which resulted in them getting carbon monoxide poisoning due to the lack of airflow in our driveway, landing them in the ER. Asher, what's the crane doing? Is it going to bring us a hot tub? Well, it can happen in an outdoor setting. It's much more rare and less likely. Overnight, Morgan Miller telling GMA, quote, it was a freak accident that should have never happened. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have expert medical advice on kids and carbon monoxide that every parent needs to hear. 
With your GMA First Look, I'm Rhiannon Nally, ABC News, New York. It's being called a tipping point in Alzheimer's research. A second treatment has now been approved that targets the underlying cause of Alzheimer's. And just last week, data was released about a potential third drug. A Texas woman is already using the recently approved treatment. She tells our Courtney Friedman, hope for patients is finally here. Gail Youngdale's mother died from Alzheimer's disease. Then years later, she herself began forgetting names and losing memories. My children were telling me, you're doing some of the same things that grandmother did. And that disturbed me. Her daughter, Terry Youngdale, said it was early enough for her mom to enroll in a clinical trial for a new Alzheimer's drug. They found the Kerwin Medical Center running a global trial. I'm doing this for the people of the world, not just me, not just my family. She's proud to be a part of a trial that helped the FDA approve the drug with the brand name Lakembi. All of a sudden, now Alzheimer's is a manageable disease. That's amazing. It is amazing. But I have to say, it's not a quick fix. Mm -hmm. And it's not a cure either. For two years, Gail has done the infusions along with MRIs, PET scans, blood tests and other assessments. That's a lot to go through. Is it worth it for you? It, I absolutely it was worth it. It didn't hurt me a bit. Medicare and Medicaid have agreed to cover uh, the drug once it's available to distribute. Greg Schuto is the executive director of the Alzheimer's Association of San Antonio and South Texas. He says three new Alzheimer's drugs all clear out plaque that builds up in the brain causing dementia. The first treatment called Adahelm was FDA approved three years ago, reducing cognitive decline by 15%. Then Lakembi was approved this year, reducing decline by 27%. Then just last week, data was released about donanumab in trials now showing up to a 35% reduction. The thing that all three have in common is they're most effective in the earliest stages of dementia. Which is why Gail got involved as soon as possible. And with Lakembi, she's seeing astounding improvement. My mind is a lot more clear than it used to be. And I sleep well and I eat well. She even started taking up old interests. There's a needle point pattern out that I haven't seen out in a long time in her crochet again. If I have some music, I think I could play the piano. <laughs> I gave all my music away. Renewed hobbies, renewed hope, and a mission to break a century old stigma. She sees it as her strength, whereas most people see Alzheimer's and any form of dementia as their weakness. I'm not ashamed of it. It's just something that happened. Something happening to millions who now have more treatment options than ever before. Touch your nose. Okay, that's and that was Courtney Friedman reporting. Go look out there with Trans Guide. Now this shot looks okay at Loop 410 at Exchange Parkway, but earlier we had a reported crash on the eastbound lane of the Exchange Park, Loop 410 and Exchange Parkway. So we'll be checking in with Stephen for the very latest. Uh, he'll be joining us in about uh, 15 minutes or less. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Hot. Yeah. And hotter. <laughs> I thought my electric bill was bad the last one I got. I'm uh -oh. not looking forward to even what's going to be coming. So, yeah, it's going to be uh, an extended stretch of very hot temperatures. Again, at least, you know, there are some comparisons being made to early on a few weeks ago, but the difference being we're not going to have the afternoon humidity. So, you know, that's when we had those 115 heat index mm -hmm. readings. Yeah. That's not going to be the case, but okay. still, it's going to be blisteringly hot and it's going to be around for a while. So, just, uh, I don't know what to say, grin and bear it. I, I'm, I'm not sure if there's anything to say about this. Anyway, beautiful picture. This was from, I believe, Saturday evening. We had a couple of extra clouds around here. And yeah, just a fiery sunset. Look at how that, oh, that water looks like glass out there. Thank you very much. Here's the uh, the update from uh, CPS Energy. It is a yellow conservation day today from uh, 3 to 8 p.m. There's lots of different ways that you can conserve other than adjusting the thermostat. So there's a lot of good information on there that you can check out. All right, last year at this point, we had 50 days at triple digit temperatures. So far, the count is at 34. But just looking at the forecast, we are going to be getting up in through at close to 50 by the end of next week. And I'm looking at triple digit temperatures even through most all of next week, kind of jumping to the end of the story here. But it's not a, a very good outlook. All right, we've got, like I said, a lot of clear skies right now. Temperatures 
we may drop a degree or two, one or two clouds perhaps, and then warm up through the 80s, already up to 95 by noon. And then we are going to be topping off at 103 later on today. But again, at least the humidity will drop down somewhat. Satellite, nothing really showing up as of right now. And just kind of take a look, just step back and boy, pin the tail on the high pressure area. Where is it? Right smack on top of us. This thing is, as you can see, diverting any sort of rain all the way around us. And the problem is, Basically, that's not going to move at all. It just stays in place not only this week, but also next week, and it's almost right on top of us. So it's just pushing down on the atmosphere that compresses the atmosphere that helps to uh, heat things up. But like I said, the one saving grace is the fact that we don't have the afternoon humidity. There's humidity out there right now. So we're looking at 103s. Now, by the way, we are into as far as the high temperature, the hottest Time of the year, 97 degrees is the average normal high temperature. We're going to be five, six degrees above that all week long. And then really starting tomorrow through uh, about the next week is when the average low temperature is 76 degrees. So this is getting into the historically hottest time of the year and it is living up to the billing and then some. Wow. Like I said, even looking at some of the long now again, things can change two weeks down the road, but even going into next week, it's not looking promising at all. All right. Well, at least there's lower humidity in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the, the one little plus coming out of the forecast. All right. Thank you, Mike. Turns out Mother Nature does on a calendar. She's like, oh, it's August. <laughs> Let's keep the heat on. Uh, let's just Welcome crank things up. August. Yes, you bumped it too high, ma'am. Mm. 451, 81 degrees. The Barbie Bonanza continues at the weekend box office. Up next, how much it collected during its second week. Plus, Madonna shares how she recovered from a serious bacterial infection. Pick three numbers, 710 Fireball 1, daily four numbers, 3159 Fireball 0. Cash 5, 5, 8, 14, 18, 32. Lotto, Texas, 6, 7, 13, 32, 39, 48. And your Powerball numbers, 10, 25, 27, 34, 38. Powerball 2, Power Play 3. Good luck. Barbie continues her reign at the box office. For the latest what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Chuck Silverstein. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. A week later, the Barbenheimer boom is not yet a bust. Seven days after Greta Gerwig's Barbie and Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer conspired to set box office records, the two films continued unusually strongly in theaters. Barbie took in a huge $93 million in its second weekend, according to studio estimates. Oppenheimer stayed in second with a robust $46.2 million. Barbenheimer, the two movies combined, have already surpassed $1 billion in worldwide ticket sales. Madonna lovingly credits her children and friends with aiding her medical recovery. The pop queen, 64, a mother of six, paid tribute to her loved ones on Instagram Sunday, one month after she was hospitalized for several days for a serious bacterial infection. Love from family and friends is the best medicine, Madonna wrote in her post. This week, Travis Scott released his highly anticipated fourth studio album, Utopia, and it's already breaking records. Friday, Utopia became Spotify's most streamed album in a single day in 2023 so far. Celebrating birthdays, July 31st, Richard Gere is 74, Chris Tucker is 52, and Zach Ward of A Christmas Story and A Christmas Story Christmas is 53. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. Chuck Sievertson, ABC News, New York. You know who that is, right? That's Scott Farkas, the bad guy from A Christmas Story that bullied our boy Ralphie. Oh, no, mm -hmm. that's him. That's him, but happy birthday, Scott. Okay, <laughs> 456, 81 degrees. Former President Trump blasting charges against him and denying any wrongdoing. Up next, a closer look at how Trump is paying for legal fees with political donations. South Central Texas has been in drought for more than 680 consecutive days. Up next, how fire departments are dealing with an increased risk of wildfires in parts of the Hill Country. And ahead on GMSA at 6, a dramatic rescue after a car caught fire in Fort Worth. How it all unfolded coming up. This does not look fun. 410 at East Houston Street. Stephen Cavazos will take a closer look coming up. Live from KSAT 12, 
Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M1 in Washington. Donald Trump is facing mounting legal troubles and bills. What ABC News is now learning about how his super PAC has spent more than $40 million on its legal costs. Coming up. And we're expecting another hot day today in the triple digits, um, even more so than last week. But uh, good news, maybe not as high in the humidity department. And we're about to turn the page on the month. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, the 31st of July. That's right. Happy Monday. Uh, getting ready to go to August, which is typically our hottest month anyway. Of the year. Here's mm -hmm. Mike Osterhage shaking his head and kind of going, gee whiz, people. Yeah, new new month, unfortunately, uh, same weather. And, you know, it hasn't been ridiculously hot the past few days. 99 Saturday, 100 yesterday. But crank it up a few notches as we go into this week and it's almost looking like next week as well. 81 right now. Dew points at 71, so a heat index of 85 degrees. 103 high temperature today, but as Steph was talking about alluding to the humidity won't be like what it was a few weeks ago when we had those dew points that stayed very high. We had heat index readings that were like 115 in the afternoon. That's not going to be the case this time around. The aquifer well, there's a nice little uh, nice little bump up seven tenths of a foot in yesterday's reading and the allergens mold is on the low side. Heat index readings around the area right now. We do have our morning humidity. It will drop down later on. Feels like 88 up the road at Canyon Lake right now. 84 at Castroville as well as uh, over there at Randolph 85 at the airport. We do have heat advisories, so we're now back to we haven't it's been a few days since we had these heat advisories, but that's been issued in, in effect up until eight o'clock tonight for a good chunk of the area, not just because there's not an advisory. It's not reaching the because different counties have different criteria for these. So it's still going to be very hot out here to the west and to the uh, south and southwest. The uh, heat advisories, I would venture a guess we're going to be seeing a whole lot more of those this week, at least warm and humid this morning. Then today, tomorrow, 103, mostly sunny skies, staying hot the rest of the week and the weekend and beyond still triple digit temperatures and of course on top of this in the high fire danger, especially in portions of the hill country with that lower humidity out there in the very dry conditions and the hot temperatures. All the details in the forecast look ahead to the first few days of August. Hang on, better sit down for this details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, good morning, sir. What's going on on the roads? Well, we have had a busy morning over here, Mike. We have plenty of road work that should be wrapping up at 410. North and South lanes were impacted over the weekend. Really, we had our eyes on the Loop 1604 North Expansion Project. I'm sure a lot of you have been uh, following that. But as we take a look here, don't forget, we also have work that took place over the weekend right along Loop 410 on the city's east side. Now, this is a full closure. It was in the North and South lanes, and notice that we see still have plenty of backups taking place this early in the morning. This is right there in the northbound lanes, and that's where we have that little bit of a buildup in orange and yellow. Never a good sign at right as you approach East Houston Street. My advice exit WW wide if you can early. This should have wrapped up around this five this morning, so let's keep our fingers crossed. Crews are in the finishing stages, and we won't see a huge impact with the morning drive time. Giving you a wide look at the map, we did have some issues out there earlier as well along Loop 410 at Exchange Parkway. A crash had at least three lanes blocked, but it does look Look like that's already cleared out. Not too worried about that anymore. Taking a look at some of the travel times. If your destination is the Alamo City this early in the morning, 25 minutes along I-10 eastbound if you're heading in from Bernie. 27 along 281 southbound heading in from Bolverde. And the drive time for our neighbors up in New Braunfels should be about a 27-minute commute along 35 southbound. But I'll keep it a close eye on this. 410 at East Houston. It looks like the southbound lanes have reopened. It's the northbound lanes where we're seeing that impact with bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic out there. I'll have more updates for you and more closures on the way coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Seth. Thank you, Stephen. This morning, a shooter is on the run after San Antonio police say he shot a teenager. This happened this past weekend at an apartment complex in the 100 block of Babcock Road around 1.30. Now, police have not clarified what led up to that shooting or what the 15-year-old boy was doing when he was shot. The uh, teen suffered non-life-threatening injuries, and police are still searching for the man they say did it. Parts of South Central Texas are in critical condition when it comes to the drought. Extreme heat is nothing new for lifelong Texans, but officials are urging caution. Avery Everett was in the hill country where people there are dealing with especially tough conditions. It's been tough uh, between drought for two years. 
Chad Lowland's lawn has a certain look. The most, the perimeter of this home is predominantly uh, turf. Artificial grass layered next to drought tolerant landscaping. And he says turf has taken over his landscaping business in Bernie. It's been tougher lately because not only we are in drought, but we've got 100 plus degree temperatures every day. And that's hard on a plant even when you're not in drought. Parts of South Central Texas have been in a drought for more than 680 consecutive days. See how crispy these leaves are? The U.S. Drought Monitor reports that San Antonio and the Hill Country are some of the most severe areas for drought across Texas and across the country. Locals here have gotten used to the drought over the past two years, but officials are still urging of the dangers. Texas heat is brutal, and uh, those of us who've grown up in it, we don't think much about it. Scott Moreland is the fire chief out in Holotus. He says the longevity of South Central Texas drought causes concerns for wildfires. The dry and the, the winds that we get this time of year. It's been every day for the last 600 and something days. Moreland says wildfire season runs alongside the summer heat. He says we're nowhere near seeing as many wildfires this year as we did last. But he is worrying about how much water would be available if that did happen. Our focus is primarily on knowing where we can obtain water if we need it. Lowland now only waters his yard from a well about one day a week. When the system comes on, it just sits there and it drips right at the base of the plant. And for others in his community who are under drought emergency restrictions, it's been tougher lately. Keeping a lawn looking fresh is far from reality. We mentioned those concerns of fire. Texas A&M Forest Service has reported significantly less wildfires this year than they did last. Since the start of 2023, there have been about 360 wildfires across the state of Texas, and that number this time last year was more than 1400. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Former President Donald Trump remained defiant on the campaign trail over the weekend, blasting the latest charges against him and denying any wrongdoing. Sources say his team has paid millions of dollars worth in legal fees with cash from political donations. As ABC's, ABC's M. Wynn reports, his GOP opponents say he should be using that money against President Biden. This morning, Donald Trump's legal team bracing for a possible new federal indictment over the former president's alleged efforts Not to overturn the 2020 Biden presidential election. Now. Special counsel Jack Smith leading a wide-ranging investigation into the January 6th attack on the Capitol, meeting with Trump's team last week, a clear indicator that criminal charges could come any day now. These are ridiculous indictments. Trump bashing his latest legal issues, including two new charges of obstruction of justice in the classified documents probe. Smith accusing Trump of trying to delete security camera footage at Mar-a-Lago last year, just days after a draft subpoena for footage at the Florida residence had been sent to his attorney. That is quintessential consciousness of guilt, which shows that he knew what he was doing was wrong. It just gets worse for him. The onslaught of legal troubles and bills in the midst of Trump's 2024 campaign. ABC News has learned the super PAC that supports the former president has spent more than $40 million on legal costs in the first half of this year and just launched a new legal defense fund specifically to cover costs incurred by allies entangled in his investigations. We also spend more than 20 million attacking me. I think that uh, we need to be focusing on using our energy and resources on defeating Biden. In all cases, Trump has denied any wrongdoing. His attorney in Fox News over the latest accusations of a cover-up in the classified documents probe. Over. If President Trump didn't want something turned over, I assure you, that is something that could have been done, but he never would act like that. In that superseding indictment against Trump, Smith accuses the former president of directing two staff members to destroy security camera evidence. One of the men, Carlos de Oliveira, who's the head of maintenance at Mar-a-Lago, is due in court today. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Time now is 508 and 81 degrees for now. Still ahead, how Apple is promising to fix a bug in iPhones and iPads that may affect screen time restrictions for kids. Caught on camera, thousands of dollars stolen from a local Sikh temple. Up next, what video is revealing about the theft and suspects so far. And outside with live cam, enjoy 80 degrees now because we make a big jump again later today and for the rest of the week. Mike goes straight has your work week forecast coming up as we jump into the month of August. 
San Antonio police are trying to find those accused of stealing thousands of dollars from a place of worship. It was all caught on camera at a northwest side Sikh temple. Surveillance video shows that nearly $5,000 worth of donations stuffed inside a bag just after Sunday services last week. The thief wearing a black shirt and jeans is being seen dropped off by someone in a silver car walking inside the temple. He is seen trying to pry open the donation box. Then he begins to drag the box to the front door. And that's when the safe cracks open. He begins stuffing the money in a white bag. Then he walks into a silver car, takes off. It's really disturbing that, that this would happen in the middle of the day. Um, clearly, the, the person who did this was desperate, uh, desperately seeking money. But really to take from a, a church or a place of worship, I think, could be perhaps the worst type of offending. And the perpetrator clearly knew what they were looking for, right? Since the theft, sick leaders have bolted their donation box to the ground and clean out that box regularly. If you have any information about the suspect, please contact San Antonio Police. Time now is 513 and 80 degrees for now. Still ahead, why a giant flashing X sign installed on top of a building formerly known as Twitter's headquarters in San Francisco is prompting an investigation. Plus, some big changes appear to be in store for the standard iPhone lineup. If you have mesothelioma, there is $30 billion set aside for victims and their families. As America's largest injury law firm, Morgan & Morgan has recovered over $15 billion for injury victims and their families. Morgan & Morgan has a reputation for protecting and fighting for compensation for families just like yours. It's easy. It's free unless we win. Call the number on your screen now. There's only one Morgan & Morgan. Zizol relieves allergies while you sleep, so you wake refreshed for a more productive day. Zizol works faster than Claritin, and on first dose provides the same relief as Zyrtec in a pill nearly half the size. Be wise all. Take Zizol at night. Just between us, you know what's better than mopping? Anything. Well, I switched to Swiffer WetJet, and it's awesome. It's an all-in-one that absorbs dirt and grime deep inside, and it helps prevent streaks and hay. WetJet is so worth it. Love it for your money back. 517, Twitter's latest change to its headquarters has sparked an investigation in the Bay Area. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Elon Musk may have run afoul with San Francisco officials after changing the name of Twitter to X. The city is now investigating the sudden appearance of a giant flashing X on top of the company's headquarters. The sign was reportedly installed without the required safety permits. And Apple is vowing to fix a reported bug in its devices that may keep parents from restricting their kids' screen time. According to the Wall Street Journal, the glitch causes the downturn time feature in Apple devices to malfunction, leaving kids with unlimited access. Apple previously said the bug had been fixed. Finally, big changes are reportedly in store for the next iPhones. Apple is set to announce its new lineup of phones in September. According to Bloomberg, the new Pro models will come with titanium frames instead of stainless steel, making them strong and lighter. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. 519. Happy Monday, team. Yes, happy, happy Monday. Monday. Happy last day of July. Yeah. yeah, happy last day of July. You know, with, you know, August is tomorrow, and there's still plenty of road work. One of the big ones, 1604, and I mean, yes. I avoided the <laughs> whole area this weekend. I know a lot of folks were still, whether or not we told you about it, it's easy to get caught in the mess. More work is on the way. I drove over uh, Hebner over 1604 and slowly it was just kind of yeah. looking <laughs> either way to see how they were doing on the loop. Yeah. And it did open yeah, yesterday. It, it did. And they're on time. But we're seeing some delays with yeah. 410. You know, we've been talking about 1604 for a while now, but uh, we can't forget about other areas of town. Check it out, guys. Yeah, not looking great out there. This was actually supposed to wrap 5 a.m. We're obviously seeing some delays at this hour, so I'll find out what's going on. But uh, keep this in mind. North and southbound lanes saw a full closure over the weekend here along Loop 410 for some road work, and we're still seeing that wrap up. But uh, again, crews are out there. It's causing some significant delays for drivers that are heading through the area. It's right there at the I-10 interchanges where we're seeing that work take place. But uh, again, keep this in mind. Uh, there, those delays could cause uh, could last for a little while longer, given the fact that 410 is one of those busier areas. Giving you a wide look though at our map, of course, you know the story is going to be a lot of construction. We've been talking about 1604 and I want to remind you early, 
plan ahead this weekend because we're going to see more barrier work take place here and this is going to start Friday, August 4th. It's going to wrap up on Monday, August 7th. And again, that work takes place overnight, nine in the evening to five in the morning. Westbound main lane full closure. That's from Kyle Steel Parkway. That's the exit ramp to the Bandera Road entrance ramp. And again, full weekend closure, which means basically what we saw this last weekend and the weekend before it's going to carry on this upcoming weekend. So scan this QR code, know what to expect ahead of time. There is plenty of work taking place in and around the Alamo City into the early days of August, and I can't believe we're heading into August with this heat, Mike. Oh yeah, nice. now granted this is the historically hottest time of the year, but this is ridiculous when we're averaging five, six degrees above the normal average high temperature. More on that in a second. First of all, very cool looking picture from over the weekend. That halo, or I've heard them called sun dogs, that uh, ring around the sun. And that's because with these little high wispy clouds, and sometimes you can't even see some of those, uh, that high, those high wispy clouds out there, but they're little tiny ice crystals and they act like prisms. And so therefore they refract the light and cause that ring, that rainbow right there around the sun. And that can happen at night as well with the, uh, the moon. Like I said, sometimes it doesn't even look like there's anything up there yet. You still see that, but there's those very, very, very small ice crystals. So thank you very much for the Acasac connect picture. Looks like we've got a frozen camera over there at I 10. Um, unless everybody stopped on the highway, I don't think so, but we do have clear skies right now. Temperatures were still a good, uh, uh, two, three degrees above the average low right now with our morning humidity. And then we already make it up to that's 11 o'clock, 95 already at noon. So we're already close to the normal high temperature at noon, which again is 97 right now. This is the hottest time of the year historically. And then 103 for a high temperature. Now the, the only saving grace really we've been talking about this for the past couple of weeks is the fact that yes we do get the lower humidity in the afternoon so we don't have those just ridiculously high heat index readings as a matter of fact if you are in the shade or say you hop in a pool and then get out you'll actually feel a little bit on the cool side because the with the drier air in place the moisture can evaporate very efficiently off your body. Now there's the high, which is plunked down basically right on top of us. That thing is not really going anywhere. And as it sits directly on top of us, that's what's pushing down in the atmosphere. And that's why we are heating up so much more. And this thing again, just does not move throughout the rest of the week, even going into the weekend. There are some minor shifts a little bit going into perhaps next week. Maybe uh, a chance at, at something trying to come in here from the Gulf of Mexico. But again, that thing is not going anywhere anytime soon or sooner or later. So therefore, these low triple digits stay all week long. 103s, maybe a, a fluctuation of a degree or two by Thursday, perhaps Sunday. But yeah, well above normal, very, very hot humid in the mornings too and this is going to stick around through next week. I'm thinking back to this past Saturday morning which it got down to about 73 in my neighborhood. Um, everybody was out and about. Yes. Sunday morning about 10 degrees warmer it seemed like. <laughs> yeah. yeah Saturday was nice in the morning. And then even in the afternoon it was 99. Mm -hmm. We had gone out to get a bite and it was like wow, this isn't yeah. bad at 7 o'clock in the evening sitting yeah. outside. So. Nice you may break. ask, well, why are you guys looking back? Because we don't want to look for <laughs> uh, it. was so nice. 524, 80 degrees. Coming up next, why Viola Davis has stepped back from starring in an independent film. Plus, John Hamm returns to Good Omens. The writers and actors strikes against the studios and streaming services are causing many people in Hollywood to make some tough decisions. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. It did take me back. Viola Davis has stepped back from starring in and producing G20. The action thriller is one of many independent films to receive a waiver from SAG-AFTRA to start production despite the union's ongoing strike. In a statement to Deadline, the Oscar winner said, I do not feel that it would be appropriate for this production to move forward during the strike. I stand in solidarity with actors, SAG-AFTRA, and the WGA. What if we open the door but we didn't shut it? People are talking about Talk To Me. The supernatural horror film opened over the weekend with an estimated $10 million, more than twice what it cost to make. It's the biggest debut in five years for distributor A24, which won a bidding war for the rights at the Sundance Film Festival. Oh. 
Whoa, this is uh, this is amazing. <laughs> What's something terrible? I mean, it's doing like one thing here and another thing here, and they're both totally different things, but they're both so good. Season two of Good Omens features the return of John Hamm as Archangel Gabriel, who shows up having lost his memory and his clothes. John Hamm is a stone cold genius at comedy, <laughs> so then you're like throw something at him, and take all his clothes off and he'll deliver. <laughs> yes. You know? Oh! <laughs> what? Now it's doing something down here. Good Omen Season 2 is now streaming on Prime Video. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. What thing do you... Okay, 528, 80 degrees. It is the end of July, but not an end to the extreme summer heat. Up next, how the hottest parts of the nation are preparing for a very warm August. Plus, what does San Antonio need when it comes to the budget? Just ahead, why two city council members say we need more police officers and better health care. And ahead on GMSA at 6 as we push through one of our hottest summers on record. Did you know that even dessert? Desert plants need to be watered. Sorry, not hungry here at all. Gardening with KSET is coming up. The last day of July, but that doesn't mean that does not mean the heat is going anywhere anytime soon. Summer has broken records and it's been particularly difficult for those who are most vulnerable. Up next, how people living in the hottest areas are preparing for more hot temperatures in August. That's us, right? We're already starting here at 80 degrees and looking forward to that heat rising again this afternoon. Another waiting, hot day. I'm waiting for Mike to go, duh. <laughs> 5.32. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, July 31st. I wouldn't do that, yeah. You, I know. No, you know. no. I, I, can't, I can't believe <laughs> how hot it is already. You yeah. would do it to me, not to her or him. You right. would do it to uh, me. Yeah, he uh, did it <laughs> Yeah, we, we, I mean, we haven't started the heating process yet, so we'll drop down a few more degrees. Uh, we still only end up a couple of notches above normal, so we're not even getting down to where we should. One day last, we've got down uh, actually below normal readings, which was very nice. But uh, today, yeah, it is going to be very, very hot and again, even hotter than what we had over the weekend. 100 yesterday, 99 on Saturday. Wasn't really too bad, especially in the evening hours. Now, we'll still have that lower humidity in the afternoon and the early evening hours, so we're not going to have just ridiculously high heat index readings, but still, it's going to be really darn, darn hot, to put it mildly. 81 degrees right now. Dew point stands at 71, so our humidity has come back up this morning. Wind out of the south, 5 miles per hour. That gives us a heat index with that humidity out there of 85, 88 Canyon Lake, 84 at Randolph. Heat advisories, once again, are now back into the picture. And I would have to venture a guess that we're going to be seeing these pretty much all week long because nothing is going to be changing. Also, on top of this, you got to watch out, especially in portions of the Hill Country, the very high fire danger because, of course, it's bone dry out there. And with the very low afternoon humidity, relative humidities are going to be very, very low. So therefore, that increases the fire danger. But this is, in effect, the heat advisories up until 8 o'clock tonight. Again, warm and humid this morning, 103, mostly sunny today, tomorrow, and the rest of the week staying very, very hot. Same thing right up there around 102, 103 degrees. And that goes into the weekend, and it's looking like next week. Still triple digits through most all of next week, well above normal temperatures. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, you had some problems earlier, right? Yeah, hey, things have cleared out, Mike. We have better news report here at 410 at East Houston. Now, you've been watching us. We had some pretty significant delays there. And remember, this was due to some closures that we saw out there over the weekend. North and southbound lane saw some pretty big backups there for quite a while, and that's because traffic was uh, seeing some closures. And again, that should have wrapped at 5 this morning. But it does look like we saw some delays and uh, it looks like that has already cleared out. So just keep this in mind over the weekend. 410 northbound southbound right there at the I-10 interchange. We'll see another full closure this weekend, but that has already wrapped up. We'll keep a close eye on it. And if anything pops up along Loop 410 in the meantime, I'll be sure to let you know. Giving you a wide look, though, at our map, of course, we know that there's plenty more road work to take place in and around our city. None of it is slowing folks down if you're making your way into the Alamo City. Pleasant drive from Pleasanton along 37 northbound with 30 minutes at this hour 30 along US 90 eastbound if you're heading in from Castroville this early in the morning and right now the arrival from Lytle should be about 19 minutes or so along 35 northbound again better news report here at 410 at East Houston we'll get another look around town coming up in the next few minutes guys thank you Stephen.
A man who San Antonio police say had plans to meet up with a woman instead has met with trouble. They say he found himself trying to dodge bullets at two different locations. Katrina Weber is live near Culebra Road and Petranco, and we understand, Katrina, that man actually was hit by gunfire. Yeah, he was. Uh, police say, though, that his wounds were not life-threatening. Now, this location behind me is where he says this was the first time that his life was threatened. He says that someone shot at him but missed as he got out of his car at this gas station. Well, a few hours later, it seems that the shooter did not miss. Police found the man wounded in his leg outside a home on a street called Deertail Creek after three this morning. Now, that's in a neighborhood near Calabria and Grissom Roads. The man told officers he originally planned to meet with a woman at the gas station here on Calabria Road. But after dodging the bullets here, he apparently had a change of plans. Now, at some point later, he says he went to the home on Deertail Creek to meet with the woman there. Instead, two men caught him by surprise and shot him. Now, it's unclear why uh, police believe he was targeted for uh, the shooting on two at two different times, but uh, they do believe that that woman was involved. Now, police say that she got into a red pickup with the shooters and took off. And again, the man who was shot was taken to a hospital for treatment. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. 536, the European Union's Copernicus Climate Change Service and the World Meteorological Organization predict that July 2023 will be the hottest month on record. And so far, it looks like August may keep that trend going. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, that CDC is reminding people to stay indoors when possible. July ends Monday night, but the extreme heat the month brought for much of the U.S., isn't fading away with the turn of a calendar page. I'm trying to find some cool air, and when it comes, it's like, yay, it's here. But my God, it's only for a minute. Hot weather in the summertime isn't out of the ordinary, but the past couple of weeks have had record-setting temperatures in numerous cities. For example, on Saturday, Phoenix saw thermometers rise above 110 degrees for the 30th straight day. Summer is always a tough period for us. This summer has broken records and it's been particularly difficult for those who are most vulnerable. Heat alerts are in effect for more than 70 million people in more than 10 states, from Texas to Florida, according to the Weather Prediction Center. If you're not used to the heat and stuff like this, I would suggest you don't necessarily come out and experience it because it is a lot. The Weather Prediction Center forecasts the Southern Plains, Lower Mississippi Valley, and southeast could see heat indices rise above 105 degrees this week. Once you've been living in Atlanta for a long time, you kind of just know how to handle it. You know how to embrace it a little bit. Like you're going to sweat. You're going to be a little bit uncomfortable. And that's just part of living here. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The Biden administration is launching a website for its new student loan repayment plan. It comes weeks after the Supreme Court rejected the president's efforts to completely eliminate student debt for millions of borrowers. Students can now access the site and apply for the new program. It could lower monthly payments for some borrowers and reduce the amount they pay back over the lifetime of their loan or loans. Student loan payments have been on pause for years due to the pandemic and are set to resume this October website will be fully functional sometime next month. A young girl from Honduras was found in Texas days after her mother died. Border agents near Eagle Pass say they found the girl after three women helped her cross over the Rio Grande. She was traveling to be to go to the U.S. to be reunited with her mother, but it was discovered the girl's mother passed away just three days earlier. Authorities have not said what will happen to the child. In California, a bomb squad had to be called after two mysterious packages were parachuted into a neighborhood over the weekend. Deputies originally responded to the incident and evacuated peop people out of some nearby homes. Then the bomb squad was called. After investigating, the unit announced the packages were actually just part of a school science experiment project. Well, that would get a lot of people's attention, especially the way oh it was packaged. Goodness. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Time now, 539 and 80 degrees for now. The building of the San Antonio budget just around the corner. Up next, what the future of the Alamo City looks like from the viewpoint of two city council members. Let's look out there with live cam. Yeah, we're already at 80 degrees, but that's not going to be bad compared to the heat we will feel later this afternoon. Just how long this is going to last, we're going to be checking in with Mike very soon. 
There are new members on our San Antonio City Council and budget season is right around the corner to decide how our tax dollars are going to be put to work. To break down top priorities, initiatives, and even break some news, District 2 City Councilman Jalen Aki Rodriguez and District 10 City Councilman Mark White joined Leading SA this weekend. Councilman Jalen McKee Rodriguez announcing his CCR, requesting city staff to expand our homeowner support programs to include a teacher homebuyer assistance program. And on the other side, new city councilman for District 10, Mark White, talking about working with council members, making our city a better place. Both city councilmen breaking down their priorities for the upcoming budget conversations. Yeah, so we've got to get uh, more money in this budget for additional police. I think we're going to be at, at least able to, to get enough for 100 new officers. Um, that's something I talked about a lot on the campaign trail, and, and I think we're going to be able to get done. Uh, the other big issue, uh, of course, is homelessness in the city. And, and we're going to have to find a way uh, to get some money there to clean up the encampments and help get these folks um, off of the streets. You know, it's a it's a public safety issue and it's also an economic development issue. Our community health um, and the disparities that exist in our communities, such as diabetes, lack of access to green space, um, asthma, lack of access to health care facilities that make it so that we're much more susceptible to uh, pandemic, you know, um, disaster like the pandemic, um, continuing to focus on upstream crime prevention initiatives and um, investing in opportunities for our young people. Um, of course, infrastructure following through on our new equity lens that is going to make it so that districts like District 2 on the east side will receive um, an even greater share of infrastructure funding and achieve comparable, comparable streets by 2030. Um, and of course, we hear a lot about vacant structures. Uh, we talked about a lot of issues across the spectrum. We talked about the possible move of the Spurs Arena, HB 2127, the law that the city is suing the state over, and of course, talked about crime prevention and homelessness efforts. Now, if you missed any of the conversation, we have all of that right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. We have Leading SA every Sunday at 8 a.m. So guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. 545, 80 degrees. Let's look out there with Transguide looking over at Highway 90 and 35. Things look pretty good there so far. A couple of little areas around our city with construction, but we're gonna be checking in with Stephen Cavazos for all the latest. Welcome back. Just about 4, 549. I'll get my numbers flip flop. <laughs> we had construction over town yeah. over the weekend. Sometimes that spills over into our work days. Yeah, let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos to see how things are looking now. That certainly was the case right along Loop 410. We saw major delays because there was a big project taking place over the weekend and it did exceed that. It did look like some of the crews out there were experiencing some type of delay, which led to traffic delays. Now, the good news is, guys, if you're waking up and have to travel along Loop 410 or any of these shots behind me, you should be in the clear. We all know the big uh, obviously a uh, traffic issue of the weekend was what was happening along Loop 1604. That is because of the North Expansion Project. But don't forget other areas like this 410 northbound and southbound saw a full closure right there near the I-10 interchange now, that has already cleared out, but we can expect to see that work ramp up again later this weekend and more work is expected in some of the major highways in and around our city. You know, we always talk about 281, so don't forget there will be paving work taking place. This actually begins today this portion around nine this morning. This this takes us all the way to the end of the work week, Saturday, August 5th. Alternating lane closures along the frontage road in both directions at Bulverde Road is what you can expect. But we know we can always talk about traffic. There are plenty of closures always happening in our community, so head over to ksat.com slash traffic for a full list. I did update our website earlier this morning, but yeah, there were some pretty big delays out there along Loop 410. Good news is crews have wrapped up, but they will be back out there this weekend for more work ahead. Yes, they will. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, less humidity. <laughs> yes, <laughs> let's talk about that. <laughs> Went to the pool for a little bit yesterday afternoon. Nice. Hopped in the water, got out, and it was actually felt kind of cool. So mm -hmm. the water can evaporate very efficiently off your body, and that's what cools you. And so that's why if you're in the shade, it's a little more pleasant. So trying to anyway spin this because it's going to be hot but yeah we will have lower humidity and uh, that unfortunately there is a bad side to that or downside if you will especially out in the hill country because of the extremely low humidity the dry conditions the fire danger becomes very high out to the uh, the west all right beautiful sunset over there around lake travis 
Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you very much for that KSAC Connect picture. All right, one day to go. And as of yesterday, we are in second place, not only in the average high temperature, but also the average temperature in second place by about uh, half a degree and uh, just about, well, almost one degree below as far as the average high temperature is concerned. So we'll see what obviously transpires later on today, whether it moves into first place. But I mean, no matter how you slice it, it's still really darn hot out there. First place, second place. It's been an extremely hot July and it's going to be starting off August that way as well. So a lot of clear skies out there at uh, 410 by the airport should be a spectacular sunrise this morning. We are going to warm up through the 80s. We'll drop down maybe another degree or two here or there and then warm up very quickly today. And then as that humidity drops down, it's easier to heat things up. We're going to be up to 95 already at noon and then add almost 10 to that. So we will get up to 103. The average high temperature right now is 97 degrees. So we're going to be six above normal and we're going to be staying that way for the foreseeable future. But again, the humidity does drop down. We've got these dew points up in the low 70s right now. And then throughout the day, it does come down into the, uh, the 50s. So that's why, again, it is somewhat more comfortable. Now, again, pavements, the things dry out, you know, that's still very hot. Your car is going to be just brutally hot, but at least your body in the shade will be able to uh, cool itself a little bit more efficiently. There's the high. That thing is not going to be moving anytime soon as it's sitting almost right directly on top of us. That's what pushes down in the atmosphere. The past couple of days, it's been a little bit weaker, but it is strengthening somewhat. So it's a think of it as a heavier weight on top of us and that compresses the atmosphere. And that's one of the reasons why we're uh, we're heating up this week up 103 today. Very common number all week long, maybe a you know degree here or there and even hotter obviously out to the west. The very dry conditions though, like I said, do have a downside as far as the fire danger out there to the west. This is going to be continuing through next week and again. There ain't a drop of rain on that graphic. Oh, goodness. Mm -mm. It's going to be a lot to deal with mm -hmm. this week. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 553, 80 degrees. Look at your winning a lot of numbers. Pick three, 710, Fireball 1. Daily 4, 3159, Fireball 0. And taking a look at your cash five numbers, 5, 8, 14, 18, 32. Lotto, Texas, 6, 7, 13, 32, 39, 48. And Powerball 10, 25, 27, 34, 38, Powerball 2, Power Play 3. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, 660 severe storm reports. Most of them damaging wind over the weekend helped break the heat in the Northeast. But boy, still on. Austin going for consecutive heat records. South Florida back with the heat advisories. I'll have all of that. And former President Donald Trump might be facing a new indictment related to the 2020 election and January 6th. Plus the new charges about what he told his employees to do with security videos subpoenaed by the special counsel. You'll see those stories and so much more right here on GMA. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA Texas is dealing with one of the worst droughts in recent memory, but there's at least one thing we've avoided so far. We'll explain what that is. Plus, San Antonio police trying to figure out who stole money from a place of worship, what a security camera picked up, and how much was taken. And after the break, the phrase once in a blue moon is meant to be rare, but we're getting a lot next month. That's coming up, plus a look at what's trending right now on ksat.com and checking the roads for you if you're headed out the door in about uh, for two or three minutes we'll have a traffic update with Stephen Cavazos.